everyone. Welcome along to another episode of The Good, The Scars and The Rugby in partnership with our friends at Allianz as usual. We're in the Leicester Arms in the heart of London uh, for a very special live show with Green King and Guinness, official sponsors of the Women's Six Nations. And we are looking forward to the Women's Six Nations. It's, it's all very full circle right now. We're missing Emily Scarrett, however. As you can see, if you are watching us on YouTube, I'm sitting here alone on the stage. The woman who um, carries the name of the show and the hopes of many on her shoulders uh, is in camp with England, as she should be, which is where we want her to be. So we're very, very happy for her, but that doesn't mean that the party stops. Um, sorry, Emily, we need to keep the show on the road. So, um, because she couldn't leave the bubble to come to the show, um, we've enticed two other Red Roses to do so, since they were not on the bus uh, to Scotland today. It's my absolute pleasure to uh, welcome in two new co-pilots on the Good, the Scars and the Rugby train, um, England and Saracens prop Hannah Bottomen and World Rugby Player of the Year, Zoe Aldcroft. Come on in. <laughs> I'm really relieved that um, Bots got up onto yeah. the high chair there. I'm very sure. That's, I'm not as tall as Scars. So. I was a little worried that we'd break you even before the <laughs> show started, but it's it's great to have both of you here. Um, uh, I, I got you both a Guinness and water. I wasn't sure what, you, what you're what you having tonight, so yeah. we've just got options galore here. Guinness. Guinness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so you're in from um, England camp where uh, instead of preparing to play Scotland this week, you have been doing what? Um, rehabbing. We've, we've spent day in, day out, me and Zoe, haven't we, Zoe? We've spent yeah. a lot of time together. Um, yeah, rehabbing. Yeah, we've got a little trio of us, um, me, Botson, Amy Kirkin, Um Absolutely grueling sessions. Um, our S and C is a little bit nuts. Yes. Uh, like he just gives us the worst sessions ever. Like our condition. Well, was, like last week we were like gipping on the watt bike and oh, horrendous <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. But bad, yeah. yeah, quality time bad. on the watt bike. What else? What else does rehab comprise of? Because I don't know about anyone else here, but I've never rehabbed. So this is actually interesting to me. Yeah. So we have a fairly. Um, tight schedule in terms of like uh we have gym pretty much every day like strengthening um conditioning like zoe just said some pretty hanging sessions um and then we've been at st george's parks so we've been doing a lot in the pool um so yeah lots, when you, lots of bits and bobs. when you say pool please elaborate what happens in the pool so at st george's park we were very very much treated the last two weeks um they have a like water treadmill which is like yeah. basically a treadmill in the water um which we don't have access to anywhere else so yeah we've been very much treated to um a water treadmill yeah. at st george's park and it's absolutely lovely there as well like the rooms are like so yeah we're a bit sad that we're back at bisham abbey this week <laughs> Uh, English is my second language. Did you say you were kipping on the what bike? Gipping, I think. Oh, gipping. Even you know, like, I don't know that. And I, what is that? Like we've been thrown up on the what bike. Yeah. 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 Zoe, oh. Zoe was five reps deep. We had to do eighteen. Oh. Five reps deep, and I look at I look across, and she's like, Ugh. like <laughs> th like genuinely gagging on this bike. So oh. Yeah, like it was oh. Bad. And the week before, I was ill, and I genu I actually threw up on it. So. Oh great! Yeah, 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 this so. poor bike. Yeah, the I poor, mean, poor bikes had it, been through it. I mean, I'd say poor us. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this bike is, um, has got stories to tell. So you guys are rehabbing. What is the goal when you are in rehab? What are you working towards? Basically just to, like, sh strengthen ourselves but be stronger than we were before. So it's, like, just training to be very strong basically in the in the area where you've been injured but also like other stuff so like we do a thing called proprioception which is like where you do a lot of like balancing so like when you're on the rugby pitch you like are used to being tackled and are used to being in those awkward positions and um, so that's a little bit what rehab's about it's just making your body better than it was before so then when you get back onto the rugby pitch you're stronger and better than you were before and hopefully you won't get injured again <laughs> It feels like you're, you're convincing yourself as well. 
I'm sorry to say. Yeah. That's, a, that's a big part of rehab, just yeah. convincing yourself. Convincing yourself that you're okay yeah. and that you're going to get through it. This is worth it. This is worth it. Just have to yeah. keep on swimming. Yeah. And then when is getting back, um, what, what is that looking like? Um, so for me and Zoe, yeah, touch and wood, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're hoping to be back in contention for selection for the Ireland game. Um, that's obviously depending on whether there's any setbacks or anything, but at the moment, we're holding strong. Yeah. We are, so um, hopefully, yeah, in contention. We've got to get selected first, obviously. Um, but what well, a player of the year won't yeah. have too much of an issue with that, I don't think. Yeah. Selection. Um, how, how, how hard uh, are things going to get for the bike? We don't know, but we will let you know. Yeah. Um, then we have um, Emily's carrot back in the fold. Yeah. She's fit, she's recovered, she's in there. She's on her way to Scotland at the moment. Yeah. Um, well, she's already in Scotland by the time this pod goes out on Friday. Yes. Um, so Emily is back in the fold. Give us the, the lowdown. What's it like? What's having the whole band back together again been like? Yeah, it's fun having her back in. Um, I played against her her first game back. And honestly, she got 20 minutes at the end and she absolutely tore up. I was like, Skaz, why do you have to come on right now? But um, yeah, it's absolutely amazing to have her back. Um, she just brings like so much to the team, so much experience, so much talent <laughs> she is she is actually unbelievable but um yeah it's really good to have her back yeah i still need to go take a photo with the um the statue yeah the i think one that's still up now i don't it know it was up Did for I a certain it? amount of time you might oh, have missed it that's I, poor from you oh it's bad that is bad for bad me shame. I, bad. I really wanted to get one of myself and emily and her sport bra on the you know <laughs> on the banks of the thames um so and it was Mo's birthday this yes, week as well. Okay. So yeah. there was a bit of singing and a, is there is there actual birthday cake or is it like healthy cake? Yeah, no, it's actual cake. Yeah, I like, get right into it. Yeah, okay. I was up straight away. I was, yeah, so we have to we have to get in before our S and C goes. No, 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 you're not. Yeah, I was going to say the props are doing quality <laughs> control on the birthday cake. Of course they are. Yeah, That's it was a good one actually. It was, oh, really? a, it was a salted caramel number. It was nice. It was nice. Salted caramel. Yeah, it was, it was a good one. Did she have any say in this? Is this her favourite? I don't actually know, you know. Is it? I, I don't know either. Mm. And she, she loves macaron, macaroons. Like her sister makes macaroons and she always gets a salted caramel one. So I presume salted caramel is That's, one of her favourites. She is quite a salted and caramel kind of person. <laughs> I can kind of imagine that. <laughs> that. That now a lot of things now have fallen into place for me. Um, you have been busy this week as well, Zoe, outside of the... Uh, the bit of rehab. You did a, oh. an intensive session of TikTok appearances. Yeah, so last week I did the Women's Six Nations launch, which included a lot of TikTok dancing and like stuff that I've never really been exposed to before. But yeah, it was absolutely carnage. Like the whole afternoon, 12 till 4, TikToks. Like we had loads of like TikTok creators in. So it's called like Rugby Talk or, or something. And basically they're like massive on just creating content of rugby which is actually really cool because they do promote our sport a lot for us um on tiktok um but yeah it was carnage and they had all this like content that they wanted to do all written down and they were like right this one next this one next this one next so i was like okay okay I'm just like learning all these dances but yeah it was pretty cool and pretty good to see the tiktok world so yeah. it was amazing to see that shot I, I did see an image of you kind of like <laughs> kind of looking really, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you're starting laughing and you're blushing a little bit as well. Yeah, well, in the morning, we had to like all the formal stuff, which is like loads of like headshots and like basically you have to go up to the camera and like head down, head up. And I had to do it about 20 times just because this is just like... <laughs> um, but yeah, loads of like serious face stuff and I'm not very good at being serious. So it takes me like five minutes to like get my smile off my face as well. So I'm like, bite my cheeks, bite my cheeks. Yeah. So yeah, that was really fun. Um, uh, did you come up with uh, any perlers? Are there any things that you let slip? Did you say or do anything that afterwards you're like, I really hope no one uses this? Uh, you definitely did. You definitely <laughs> did. <laughs> Um, basically, in passing, <laughs> a journalist like came. Like I didn't even like think. Like I'm so naive, and basically everyone was a journalist in there. And she was like, "Oh, what do you what do you think about having like bonuses if you win and stuff like this?" And I was like, "Well, I wouldn't say no to money." And like, yeah. so, like this, and then she did like a big article on it. Yeah, I was like, it was, like oh, this big God. article. <laughs> I was sat sat across from Bryony Clear at breakfast, and she was like, "Oh, I wonder where they've got this information from." And the headlines like, "World Player of the Year Zoe Allcroft says." we don't get bonuses. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, that is so Zoe. Because she wouldn't have said it like, oh my God, we don't get bonuses. Oh, cry, she cry, cry. She, Yeah, she would have just been like, 
Oh no, I don't like. Don't think we get them. No, no, yeah. no. We'll won't be nice say no to, to it. it. <laughs> yeah, no, w- won't say no to money. I mean, hence here all of us are. Um, so, so that's. I mean, that's the added pressure of being the world player of the year. Now, everything you say is potentially Gospel. a headline. Yeah. Oh, I hate that because I'm really bad at stuff. Like it's so naive. I'm just like, I like tell everyone everything. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> exactly how will England win this weekend? No, 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 no. I won't put you in that kind of position. But this whole TikTok business has just taken everything to another level, it feels. Yes. Good. Are you you loving it? You're really enjoying the kind of the level of attention and scrutiny. I mean, it, it does feel like suddenly a lot more people really are invested in the outcome of this. Does that push up the pressure a bit? I don't think so. I think um, it's. I think it's great that TikTok have come on board, obviously, and um, in terms of like a different generation and getting the younger generation into the game, it, it's massive, and uh, you can't get much bigger than TikTok at the moment. So um, I enjoy watching it. I'm not so good at making them. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'll sit there for hours and just scroll. Yeah, and I'm really relieved that they that the creators came to you with the ideas and you weren't put on the spot for four yeah. hours to come up with them because Me that's too. the most Me intimidating too. part of it. <laughs> Honestly, my creativeness is just literally like my dog, like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm rubbish on TikTok. <laughs> but I think it's great that they're involved in the Six Nations, like Bot said. I think it's like obviously one of the biggest social media apps at the moment and it's just going to grow and grow and obviously if we can get as much content on there as possible and I think it's like really important for the fans to be able to see our like social side like what we get up to in camp that sort of stuff and Brian and Cleo she's pretty good at like do it she's doing like a room here um a roommate rating, rating, yeah, rating, rating. Yes. A roommate rating yeah. which is like quite good to follow. So it's just like good to see like that side of like camp and that like, how that side of works. Cause obviously, a lot of people don't have a clue what happens yeah. or what goes on in camp. So yeah, it's really good for people to see personal sides of it. Uh, do you disagree with a lot of the roommate rating? I know some people got marks for or, or marked down because of the amount of nudity going around. I mean, the, you'd have to go watch it because I don't want to give it all away. <laughs> I mean, go follow her, her TikTok. Were you a roommate? Were you yeah. a roommate? I got point, six yeah. out of ten. That that's tight. Yeah. That's tight, that. But basically, I wasn't actually in the room at all because I had to go and do rehab stuff. Rehab, so, yeah. Yeah, so we- you got off relatively lightly. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know that on the good, the bad and the rugby, they often talk about, um, in the kind of state of the game conversations, about the average rugby fan, you know, the, the brown shoes, the barber jackets, those guys. No. I mean, James Haskell goes on and on and on and on about this. Um, what is the average kind of fan that you encounter on TikTok? Who are they? What are they interested in? What is the kind of... You, you're getting a lot of direct input from people, comments, likes, engagement. I feel like... That's a that's taking this to a whole new level because people all over the place have access to you in a weird way now. Yeah, I mean, I personally haven't had loads of interactions, but uh, you have like your um, you have little boys that troll you, and then you have um, <laughs> and then you, you? have yeah. really <laughs> they must yeah, back no, themselves. No. Um, yeah, so you, I, you get like you get some the odd. I can't swear on this, can I? Well, I mean, if you want to, I'm not going to stop yeah, the you. Yeah, you're not But other than that, uh, the interactions are pretty good, and a lot of like young young girls and um, interact. And I definitely have like a few like that are like the constants that will always comment. And um, I think like in terms of having different like platforms for us, like um, being able to get like our personalities and that out there is great. So. Um, so yeah, you get like, you, uh, do you know what we get at games? A lot of fancy dress. Yeah, like do you, um, you probably, oh, I don't know, she's away with the fairies though. But I swear to God, at one of the, um, at, like Exeter away, there was like so many people in fancy dress. Almost like yeah. the Sevens. Yeah, almost. She's like Evo Man at the Sevens. Uh, yeah, maybe. I might have just completely made that up and it might have just been one game that I saw one person in fancy dress and that's just what stuck with me. But um, would, would you like more fancy dress? Absolutely. Is that what you are saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'd like Brian Cleo to rate people's fancy dress. People's fancy dress? Yeah. So if you are going to <laughs> any of the TikTok Women's Six Nations Drops matches... Up. Please dress up. We would love for uh, the rating system to continue and then we can roast you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. we could. We could, yeah. We could. Might as well make, you know, the most of the opportunity. If the players have to have their hair plaited in a million different directions. Not me. And you have to get your skin fade <laughs> done yes, the next time yes, you, yes, you yes, play. Yes. 
then we might as well have some some fans kind of pitching up and and showing off. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's that. Then we've <laughs> sorted that out. Next item on the agenda. Um, it's so good to be down here, sponsored by Guinness and Green King. Um, it's great to see great brands highlighting and committing to women's rugby and promoting <laughs> women who are athletes, um, which is something that I absolutely love and live for. On top of hosting us tonight, uh, Green King are airing the Women's Six Nations at a load of their pubs, so make sure that you do get out there and go watch it with some friends. Take new ones along. I feel like this is an absolutely brilliant recruitment opportunity. I was in South Africa last year during the Six Nations and my folks were visiting me, so my dad watched women's rugby for the first time in his life about a year ago. His lasting comment was kind of something along the lines of everyone's hair is very long and I went yes we've all just worked through lockdown without our hairdressers for a long time so don't give us like trouble about our hair but but generally he was you know obviously massively impressed um and I'd love to see more and more friends to be uh, brought into the party and if you download the Green King season ticket app you can get a free pint of Guinness <laughs> oh, serious. so Enter a competition to win tickets to a Six Nations game. Get downloading. The deadline to enter is Friday. If you are listening to this on Friday, it's this Friday. Yes, that's correct. So there are 36 pairs up for grabs. Go on it. Download the Green King season ticket app. Um, and I do want to just touch on for a moment the Guinness hashtag never settle program. Now, this is brilliant. I didn't, I promise you I didn't know about this and I feel like I've missed out on a very important slice of what's been happening. Um, they basically challenged the media to increase the visibility of women's rugby players by working to get players verified on social media. Everyone who has a blue tick or wants a blue tick knows exactly how important this is. If you have a blue tick, you get to DM other people with blue ticks. It allows you access <laughs> to a great big world of people. Um, but also just generally building the profile of people who play rugby. And they've had Wikipedia accounts set up to help media publicity, which increased visibility by 22%. Um, so this really challenges the language that media use, the topics they focus on. The resources are all out there. You can now find out almost anything about Zoe Oldcroft that you'd like to know. Um, and obviously all of this promotes places to watch women's sport that feels inclusive and just amazing to go out. Um, what is on your Wikipedia profile that is um, interesting? Is all of it very true? Have you verified all of it? Last time I checked, it was all true. Yeah, I'm hoping it is all true. Um, but um, yeah, it's basically just got on like all my career highlights, like all my rugby stories, where I went to school, if you want to know that. Um, but yeah. It's yeah. brilliant because there is now a resource that people can use. Hopefully journalists use it all the time. Um, it does, however, lend itself to updating. It does. It does, yeah. Tell me about your Wikipedia profile. Well, it's now back to normal. Someone's someone's had a go at it and changed it back. Oh. Yeah, it's not, not the same anymore. However, I probably about a year ago, Poppy Cleo decided to go on there and change what it said about me, and it just said, Hannah Bottoman likes a skim fade and, <laughs> and, and Crocs. And Crocs. And Crocs, yeah. I was actually going to wear some today, but I thought I'd, I was travelling on the tube and stuff. I didn't want to get them too dirty. Oh. It is true. It's, it's true. It's completely true. It is completely true. So anyone out there who wants to update her Wikipedia, you now have it verified. Here is your source. Just <laughs> use the link to this episode yes. and go update the Wikipedia page to include the very important detail that Hannah Bottomen is down with the skin fade and the Crocs. Anything else we'd like to add there? Uh, no. That's it? No, it's I don't want anything else. Hates the wild bike? Hates, well, I don't know, it's a love hate. It makes you better, doesn't it? it but I do you hate it. I hate it. And I there was a, the, there is a, this is going to sound like I made it up, but there is a balance beam in the green room that we were waiting <laughs> in. And Hannah Bottomen was all over that balance was. beam. I can't help myself with stuff like that after. I should have gotten a video of this. It was the strangest thing that yeah. has happened in my life. I wasn't about. very good at it though, was I? Well, I mean, the determination was impressive. Yeah, I just I tried. kept on going, don't hurt your ankle, please. <laughs> we cannot do with another injury. No, not, not on my one. watch. No. Okay, so um, go update the Wikipedia profile if you're one of those wiki wizards. Otherwise, just get the app and get yourself a, a new Guinness. Um, so verified on Insta, tick, tick, both of you? Um, Instagram, yes. I didn't, I didn't, I think we had to message someone about getting verified on TikTok and I just 
never got around to it, unfortunately. Well, I probably could. But okay. It's, it's, it's possible. But you have the blue tick on the Twitter, uh, Twitterati. Oh, do I have on Twitter? Do you have on Twitter? I, I don't have Twitter. I just have TikTok and Instagram. It's you blue have tick. the TikTok one, you have the Twitter one. I've checked I this. Oh, I do have yes, it. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Good, good, yes. good, good. good. Okay. Okay. Is that important to you? Do you, do, you, do you fly the blue tick kind of swag a little? Do you, does that make you feel a little... I think it's important because I actually got scammed. Because yeah, actually, that mistake. is a point. People and do I, get scammed. I sent them all my, pass, my passport, which is probably because I'm very stupid. <laughs> you said <laughs> that you opened the <laughs> like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Oh, Zoe! They got me. They got oh, me. They got you good. They the got world you. rugby player of the year sent the scan of her passport to someone on what the, what the, on Instagram. <laughs> what? What did? So- was it one of those fake accounts what that was, like, fake account? that was yeah. like, get verified here, send us your details? Yeah, I, I bet it was, it was that. Honestly, I thought it was uh, true, but... Okay, so if anyone ever DMs Zoe. you and says if you send us a photo of your passport, <laughs> just know that it's not the truth because that is not a requirement. No. And now they'll never get me again because I have a blue tick. There. So. That is the thing. There has been, a, there's been quite a few. <laughs> there has been quite a few people that have had, like, fake accounts made up. Wow. And then, like, yeah... Is this a lot of the chat behind the scenes? Is this the stuff that we miss or no one really cares? No, I don't. I think it's more, um, I mean, it's obviously great that we have, like, I feel like it makes us look more professional and, like, recognises us, yeah. which I think is great. I think with, with, like, sponsors as well, it, like, helps in that side of things. Like, it's more likely that a sponsor would want to get on board. If you do have those um, blue ticks and obviously increases the following, that sort mm. of thing. So I think mm. it is important in terms of that side of things. It's not necessarily something that we avidly talk about. Yeah. Who's most concerned by it? Poppy Clow. Okay, she didn't even say. hesitate. She no. just dropped that <laughs> right there. Wow. No, that's probably tight. That's probably tight. We've got a couple of, we've got a couple of keen Instagrammers um, in the squad. I don't think anyone's not got a blue tick, though. So okay. So you're in good. You're in good shape. We're in good shape, yeah. So authenticity is the word that they always use in all things social media. And I feel like this is probably the most true on TikTok because if you are posing on TikTok, you will not be able to maintain it. Like you have to just kind of 100% be that kind of whatever you are. That like whatever, at, at this stage, the only thing people watch on my TikTok is me talking about cats because that's truly probably who I really am away from, you know, the stuff. Ruby Tui was on the show a while ago and she spoke so beautifully about just being as authentic as possible. And I'm really loving that about you guys, the women's players. It feels like you tend to really show us who you are and it's kind of welcomed and celebrated on an institutional level. Whereas I feel like a lot of the men, and I have interviewed a lot of men's rugby players, are a lot more careful. Mm. Is there a difference in, why do you think that might be? Or is, it, is this just me imagining it? No, I think um, we had a conversation obviously upstairs, but I think for us, a lot of us have had a life away from rugby and we're, as women, constantly having to push the boundaries and push the ceilings to to get to where we need to be sort of thing so um rich so yeah i think in that respect maybe it's seen that we do we do push those boundaries but probably because we have boundaries to push Mm. the men are in a very Mm. i want to say the word privilege but that they've they've they're at the top of their game if they're at the top of their game they're they're there sort of thing and they're, they're looked after probably during and after rugby with the amount of I don't want to just talk about money, but the amount of money that they make. Whereas mm. for us, I think um, we have we have to push those boundaries in order to get what what we deserve. I guess I find that as women's rugby players, we have like a quite a close bond between us and our fans as well. So mm. I think like after games, you'll see us like going around the pitch. Like we'll be out there for an hour, oh, two hours, um, staying after just to make sure we get around just because we want people to be interested in us as well as our sport. Um, so I think that's really important that um, on we are authentic um, and for it to be able to be shown on our social media so then they have more of a connection to us as individual people as well mm. as rugby players. I feel like you guys really take ownership. That's what, I, that's what I get from where I'm standing. It looks like you guys really take ownership of where this tournament is going, where the Red Roses are going, how many people you're taking along with you. There is a sense of this is on me, like I'm stepping into a generation here where we can really make a mark. We can make a dent. 
Yeah, I think um, like uh, like literally what Bots has just said, like it's about growing our sport and for us to be able to do that, we kind of have to do it ourselves, like mm. push ourselves into that market and um, like just keep pushing ourselves individually, like making people want to come and watch us basically. And that's, yeah. yeah. I think people do it different ways as well. Like um, you have people like Shauna who are very, very vocal about stuff and um, will, will push like continuously to to get it better and, and we'll be very vocal about that and I think that's something that we de we 100% need and there's like Poppy's the same with like speaking out against against things um, mm. that aren't right and then mm. I think like different people have different ways so like I might not necessarily be the most vocal but um, like interacting with fans and like just putting out like like normal normal stuff and just get, getting yourselves out there like and I guess speaking out when it needs to be spoken out but um speaking about things that like we care about is obviously um massive for us so um yeah there's the different people have different ways of doing it yeah. some are more vocal than others but we we need that we need those vocal people definitely yeah, the, and the, the sense of ownership does seem to extend to the fact that you want to leave a legacy. You want to really make sure that kind of when your time in the jersey is done, there's, you know, there's, a, there's more space, more opportunity, you know, yeah. a higher hill that, you know, the next generation of girls can climb to. Yeah, definitely. I'd say like everything that we're doing at the ma at the moment. I've actually done a, like a couple of things at the moment, and basically just said that we're like trailblazers for for the next generation coming through. So everything that we're doing at the moment is for the future of women's rugby. Mm. That's brilliant, and I love that. The, the The mention of Shauna brings to mind the fact that today the No Woman No Try um, movie that we've been seeing talked about it. It had its premiere in London. It's finally out on Amazon Prime. It's all about women and rugby and yeah. Shauna is on the poster of that which yeah, yeah. I absolutely love. It's a cool photo as well actually. It's isn't it? brilliant. Yeah. Isn't that just so great yeah. to see? And that is there is the opportunity. If you're a fan or you have a sister who plays rugby or you're at all involved, here's the opportunity because if you watch that the numbers add up. Mm -hmm. That's how you as a fan get involved with No Women No Try, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We've got, we've even got a yes here on the ground. I love it. I love it. Like everyone is participating. So make sure that you catch No Woman, No Try. It's about the current status of gender, ethnicity and sexual equality within women's rugby. And it's on a prime video worldwide from the 25th. Um, if you haven't heard about it, you literally, I don't know who you follow because I feel like literally everyone has spoken about it. Yeah. It's been brilliant to see so much interest. So Six Nations, uh, Women's Six Nations kicks off. Um, that's like obviously kind of the reason we're here tonight yeah. together. Let's just recap last year. How do you feel going into this tournament now? How much has stuff changed and shifted? Simon Middleton has spoken about how much you guys have come on in the last year. Does it feel like that? Yeah, I think um, we speak about our SNC a lot, but um, Alex Martin, who's our SNC that's come in as probably had the biggest impact on on us that I would I would say over the last well since I've been in the program has, has, has certainly had the biggest impact on us and um he's brought in a completely new way of training a new way of just getting us game ready and I think he he's absolutely transformed us um I don't want to blow too much smoke up of his ass but um, <laughs> he's he's changed me as well in terms of in terms of like my thought process and and how I go towards stuff like that so for like it's not just me that he's he's had that impact on it. I'm sure he's had it on everyone and everyone absolutely loves him like I, I genuinely don't know anyone that doesn't that doesn't genuinely like love him so when you say thought process, <laughs> what are we talking? I'm very, I can sometimes be very motivated when I have someone there, but when I'm away from that, um, so I used to struggle quite, quite like not severely, that's dramatic, but um, I might not push myself the same way that I would if someone was watching me as to if they weren't. So that over the last two years, I would say, and um, it's, I've really had to like change my mindset in terms of that and nutritionally as well. We've just had a nutritionist come in, but before that Alex was doing a lot of the stuff with us and I had hours of conversations with him about it um, in terms of like, what what is a good composition for me and all that. I won't bore you with all that, but I used to be tubby and now I'm still tubby, but a little less tubby. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and, he, and he helped me massively with that, especially, um, Six Nations last year wasn't wasn't a particularly good time for me, and um, since him coming in, it's it's changed a lot.
It was a tough year, though, because the last year the, there was kind of so much of it shifted and there was, you know, the, the, the structure of the tournament even changed. A lot of it kind of felt like we were, I mean, really for the last two years, we were kind of making it up as we went along. It was a lot of it shifted on the fly and yeah. you, you didn't know what was waiting around the next corner because someone might test positive and then any of a uh, million things could shift. And I mean, it, we have come through a period of like so much insecurity. Yeah. I think we basically just learned to be so adaptable. Yeah. Like things could change within like minutes. Like at last six nations, like people were in an, in one minute, out the next minute. Um, but it kind of like made us like the team that like we are now. Like we're very adaptable. Like we do just change in those situations. Um, so yeah, health is all in all. That resilience, I resilience. guess, is is the thing that remains behind, and that kind of helps you through whatever the next challenge might be. Which is, um, in this six nations, probably. Le Crunch? Le crunch. Is, yes. that, is that how we say it? Le, we don't like to talk about it too early. Yeah. Uh, oh, too uh, we're, not, we're not talking about it yet, I promise. It's the one that we're not talking about we're yet. We're definitely going to talk about the crunch. <laughs> but you are entering this competition as favourites. I mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I, think, uh, I think that's always a tough one for us because... Um, the French team are, are an outstanding team, and, and I we're not talking. Well, about we're, we're talking about it now. Okay. So I don't know why Zoe didn't want to talk about it. It is early, but we, we're going to have to talk about it. Yeah, they're a, they're a team that have pushed us to to have to play at our very, 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 very best to to beat them, and we've had to definitely grind out some wins against them. So obviously, from winning it last year, you're you're naturally going to be favourites, but um, I don't think we we look at it like that. No, I'd say like going into that game it's always like 50 50 of who's going to come out on yeah. top mm. um so yeah it's a it's our biggest challenge i'd say definitely in the world currently yeah. yeah i think the thing that probably um bothered most of the six nations teams when they listened to simon middleton in the autumns we had him on and he was just going on and on and on about how you guys are not at your best and you mm. were smashing i mean the results were massive. You were winning in a big way. And yet here the coach is saying, well, we're not quite there yet. I think that's like the great thing about rugby because you're never there. Yeah. Basically. So like even like playing those games in their autumns, like we've still got so much more to improve on. Like we've gone into into this Six Nations with new work on what we want to work on. We want to do a lot of off ball stuff. So basically working your ass off to get back to like be involved in the next in the next play and that sort of thing so I think it's there's always stuff to improve on in rugby and it's never going to be perfect so I think that's the great thing about rugby as well that there's always stuff to improve on and we know as well like we we as a team have really high expectations of each other um, and of ourselves and um, so it's we keep pushing each other to be better and better and better um, and constantly improve the the autumns was it was like a We've we've done great, but we're all like we're so we we are better than that. Like we the, the, we we can be so much better than that. And I think that was coming out of that. The wins were great, and and that was like that was obviously fantastic. But I think knowing that there was a different level that we could bring and a, and another another place we could go to was um, was also something that that definitely probably excited us. Uh, who are the people that you're most excited about seeing in action now? Um, I did ask them this before um, about being the player who's watching the rest of the team yeah. get on with the business on Saturday, which I can imagine causes a bit of discomfort in your belly. It's like, oh, yeah. I also want to play. <laughs> yeah. But who are you really excited to see go at it in this championship? Um, personally, I'm really excited to see Maud Mier. Um, like she has been insane in training the last couple of weeks. She's like really dominated her carries, her tackles, that sort of thing. And also, she is moving from a tight head prop to the yeah. loose side. Poor because, thing. Yeah. Um, Sorry about that. So it's a horrible thing to do as well. So um, yeah, no, I, I was I was also going to say Maud. I think um, she's she's an excited young player, and with the with the crop of props that we have for, for England, it's um, to really push away into into that selection of people and, and be outstanding is, is something that's very special. So um, I think she's definitely she's definitely got a, a she's got she she's not got a lot of uh, I don't want to say she's got pressure on her to do well, but but I think she will take it in her stride and um, she, I think she's, she's going to have a, a fantastic tournament. So I was going to say she's also a very lovely person. Yeah. <laughs> she really is. 
<laughs> love that. Love that. Okay, so um, last year England won the title, but the top try scorer was... Bouchard, I believe. Bouchard. Bouchard. Correct. 1.4 yeah. Botterman. Thank you. Okay, so top try scorer this time around. Who's going to unseed Bouchard? Abby Dow. I was going to say Abby Dow. Abby Dow. Abby Wow, we Abby like to wow. call her. Abby Wow, no That's pressure That's actually another on one that I'm very excited to watch. Oh, okay. I um, probably wouldn't... I've never said, said this to her face, but I think she's outstanding. I think she's an unbelievable um, player that I'm like, give her the ball and just let her run. Just let her go. Um, but yeah, I'm, yeah, very excited to watch her play. Brilliant. No pressure, Abby Wow. No pressure, <laughs> Abby Wow. Um, Wales have introduced full-time contracts the lo- from the, the big thing that shifted I think probably as far as the Six Nations is concerned over the last 12 months is that we now have Wales on full-time contracts. There's been yeah. a lot of shake-up in Ireland as well but this feels like something that's really impactful. Yeah it's definitely massively positive I think that's where we obviously um, we are like Zoe said trailblazers in that sense with the, with the RFU um, obviously given us full-time contracts fairly early, well, earlier on than, than a lot of the other countries. But to have them them coming up and, and getting those contracts is, is really positive. And um, it's not the sort of thing that you're going to see. I feel like they'll feel like they maybe have a lot of pressure on them to, to perform because because they've got these contracts and they're now professional players but like for like even for like for us it, it took it takes time it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of um resources and and all that sort of stuff so um yeah i'm i'm looking forward to see how they go after obviously um being full time and having those retainer contracts and stuff so um but yeah i don't feel like they should put too much pressure on themselves to do outstandingly well straight away because um, that's not that's not how it how it works, unfortunately. Yeah, and they're taking on Ireland in the opening, so so that's a big one in Dublin, and it's their you know their first in the championship since the final round of the 2019. So Wales women played against USA Falcons recently. It's a confident performance, and it's a team that have quite a number of new faces in there. Are there people there that we should be looking out for that kind of that you know of or have played against or with in, in other areas? Um, so I play alongside like a fair few of the Welsh girls. I'm down at Gloucester, so right next to Wales. <laughs> um, so we've got loads of the, the Welsh contingent down there. And um, there's a couple of like really good players. And like, so Gwen Crabb, I don't even know what's happened to her since she's been given a contract, but she's got a new lease of life. She's a completely different rugby player. That's brilliant. Yes. I love to hear that. <laughs> just, hey, why are you looking so worried? Oh, no, <laughs> but this is brilliant news um, for me because, yeah. because as, as Hannah says, it could have the opposite effect. It could just be this crushing weight of expectation but it just seems like it's yeah and to be honest I've like asked her I'm like Quinn what have you been doing the last couple of weeks and she's like I don't know like I think it's just like she did, obviously like it's not working as much as she just feels free but to be honest she just said like there wasn't really much to it it's just like she's just playing different basically but I don't know if it's like a, a relative or not but um yeah she's been playing absolutely incredibly um and also so Kelsey Jones she's just had um a really bad clock, like neck injury and she's come back absolutely firing like got surf it um so we're looking forward to seeing those guys go go into it yeah i was gonna say i'm i'm not gonna say the name because i don't know how to pronounce it properly um it's definitely on your sheet it's definitely on your sheet <laughs> cecilia Tupulotto. yeah oh yeah. cecilia I'm, oh I'm, my god i'm looking forward to watching her i i don't i don't even i don't know if i've she's played uncapped. against her yeah i'm yeah. but she looks like an outstanding athlete and Sorry, I can't believe I didn't mention her either because she's another one of my teammates. She's incredible. She is so strong. Um, Yeah, Cecilia, two plotter. She's going to be good this Six Nations too. Keep an eye out for her. And she's only 18. Yeah, I was going to say she's very young, yeah. Yeah, and, um, you know, the small matter of Jasmine Joyce playing in that team as well. So plenty of reasons to tune in. Scotland are a team on the rise. Scotland just came back from Dubai where they won the final qualifier to go to New Zealand later this year. They have so much to play for right now. They've got so much momentum. This scrum, uh, did you see that? Uh, I mean, that was not, that was an, like R-rated stuff <laughs> happening there. They were just plowing. Yeah. It was impressive to see. It is impressive, yeah. Team on the rise? Definitely, definitely. I think, um, 
obviously going to that World Cup was huge for them and like you'd see on their socials and, and their emotions after the game that it's something that they were obviously um, is, is massive for them and, and rightly so obviously it's a World Cup and, and being able to go is um, a huge privilege for any country so um, yeah I think uh, they're, they're definitely a team on a rise and not one that, that we take lightly at all. Yeah, because that's uh, that's of course the first one yeah. on the on the agenda. An away game up there. What it, what's it like up there? Oh, we, we, the last time we were there, we went. We were meant to be playing in Glasgow. We it started snowing heavily, and like it was like awful weather. It was like it was. I don't even know what it was like. It must have been like a storm. So we ended up the stadium that we were meant to be playing in. We couldn't play in, so we had to drive across to Edinburgh. The next day. The next day. So the game was delayed. Drove to Edinburgh the next day. Um, and we played, where did we play? We played at Murrayfield. But it was one, it was so, so cold and it was awful. But it was quite, I think it was quite a memorable game in terms of, Skaz definitely did something. I think she, yeah. it's, it's Skaz. <laughs> I was going to no, say, she, she, that doesn't make it she memorable. De- she definitely hit a landmark of things. like um, <laughs> the, most, the most points scored or like the most... Something like that. When she 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 kicked a kick in it, and it was. She, she, I don't know. I don't know wait, what it was. It was like such wait. a dip, but it was. She kicked a kick. She kicked a kick. No, it went over. Um, but she she definitely. It was like most points scored, or like she like. I can't eat, you with a song. <laughs> it was definitely. Honestly, uh, put it in here somewhere. It was definitely something. There's there's something there. There was definitely something there. Um, okay. But yeah, it was Baltic, and then the bus journey on the way back. We're on this rubbish coach that was like just like we were just like tin sardines in this coach and it took us it must have taken us like 12 hours to get back because it took us yeah we were were supposed to fly and couldn't fly so we had to get a bus back because of the weather and we spent like three hours just just getting out of edinburgh so it definitely was like a a 10 12 hour we got back at six o'clock the next morning Mm. Glamour, hey? Proper. Wow. It was so cold that they put hot water, yeah, hot water in, in our bottles. water bottles yeah. for our hands and stuff. They, 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 there's definitely freezing. some serious photos from that game that you'll be able to find somewhere. Was, okay. Um, and Emily did one. something. Just, yeah, she did something. <laughs> she did I'm something. pretty sure it was, it was astronomic. Um, but yeah, she definitely did something. Definitely. Okay. Brilliant. So, so ready for, for Scotland this weekend. Any, any players you want to shout out to? Uh, anyone you want to give some props to? Any of the opposition you've been yeah, I think, um, keeping an eye on? Emma Wassell. Yeah. Um, she can sit, like, hit a... Well, how many? She's on, like, 52 caps? 52. Cap, but consecutively. That's yes, crazy. That's insane. That's nuts. Um, yeah. Well, I don't... Yeah, that's a, that's a hell of an achievement. And I, I think she's a very, very talented player. So, yeah, that's definitely one to watch. Props to Emma. Italy enters the championship with an experienced side. They've got uh, their scrum half, Sarah Baratin, who was uh, awarded a special cap before the men's team did what they did over the weekend. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, it was good, eh? Oh, my goodness. Oh. Fantastic. I think I've watched that try yeah. every day this week. It's crazy. Yeah, Beautiful. Well. So she's uh, reaching 100 international appearances. The only Italian woman ever to do this. Great achievement. Great platform. Uh, great to see the men honouring her and Absolutely. kind of getting, you know, that, that kind of high five from across the aisle. Qualified for the World Cup as Europe won. Mm. So plenty to play for. Sarah, uh, anyone else there on the, on the team sheet that uh, really pops up for you? Um, I think that's their um, centre. She is very good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she is very good. Very good. And, and Emily kicks. Good. And Emily kicked a kick. <laughs> yes. Okay. Brilliant. Love that. <laughs> no, I think she brings a lot of um, experience to the team. And I think like she's one of their standout players yeah. um, every time that she plays against them. And it's obviously very vocal um, on the pitch. And I always notice her when I'm playing yeah. against her. So. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. She, and she's very good. And very good. She's very good. Not just good. (laughs) Very much so. (laughs) Love it. And then Ireland entering a a new era. And this is something that we love to see. The team have really seemed to take an ownership. um, And we've been talking about ownership and taking responsibility and saying, this is what we want. This is how we want it to be. This is the legacy that we want to leave. We want to leave women's rugby in this kind of shape. Um, They've really stood up there. And now, similarly to Wales, but probably in a little different manner, they do have to now bring it to the table and say, okay, well, we've, you know, we've made progress and this is what we can do when you give us a bit of space. Yeah. I think um, what the Ireland players did to 
to to get what they needed to get done um, was obviously very brave of them and um, something that I hope no other women's team has to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, hopefully there's going to be some change there and hopefully they can they can push on and um, and really sort of elevate their game and, 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 and come back into the Six Nations firing. People might look at their fixture and go, oh, well, this team didn't qualify for the World Cup. But doesn't that just make them twice as dangerous? Because now this Angry. Six Nations yeah. Championship is, this is their tournament. This is their space this year to stake a big claim, to make a statement, to maybe claim a scalp or two. Yeah, I think they're definitely going to come out and um, making a point. Um, I know they've obviously um, got a new new squad coming in, so they're all going to be firing. I know they're very young, a very young squad, so a lot of energy um, coming into there. So I think they're going to be definitely um, very feisty this tournament. Nicola Friday was there. Did you guys kind of have a little stare off or was it all very <laughs> no, friendly really nice. at the TikTok yeah. launch? Fellow second row, so, yeah. No, so, she's very nice. Yeah. Are, are you guys are besties now. You're having cupcakes and just hanging yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no fighting talk. No risk of getting Zoe angry at all. That's just not happening. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Oh, no, it's just funny. I just, I love her so much. <laughs> I've just spent the last three weeks with her. I've just, um, yeah. I, I knew I knew what sort of like player and and the sort of person that she was, but um, yeah, you you definitely you work. She works harder than anyone I've ever, I've ever met. Yeah, but she also doesn't seem to ever get really angry. Oh no, she does. Oh, she's she just, does. She's just not going. She's just not going to hear. You should see her when we're having to do like our neck eye size. She's like. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> angry, angry girl. Angry oh, okay, girl. so yeah. but it's more of a quiet kind of like. Growl. Oh, I've actually been on. I've actually been playing against you once, and you made me like hysterically cry with laugh from the pitch. <laughs> I, I, I don't, you're gonna have to bleep me a hell of a lot. But she, um, you'd made a line break, oh, no. and someone had gone down, and you had. Well, I, th- I think you were wanted to, Connie to wait to before before she carried this ball right and connie carries the ball and all i i look up and i just see zoe like this no you fucking idiot like, <laughs> I, like you screamed it mate at the top of your lungs and i was like i've got to seriously control myself right now because i just, just the, the the sight of you running and screaming that i was like this is so funny this is so so funny so funny um yeah, there, there's definitely enough. I think there's a, a different side to everyone, but you won't you won't get Zoe angry over yeah. over a bar. Just just on the pitch. Just yeah, on the pitch. I'm definitely I'm different off field to I am on field. So, <laughs> yeah, I didn't realise I did that. <laughs> These things just slip out my mouth when I play rugby. <laughs> Your complexion has literally just gone a little darker. <laughs> Wow. Anyone else you'd like to tell us stories about while well, we have you here, Hannah, because you're just dishing them up. This no, is brilliant. I don't think I don't think I have many to be Any fair. Emily stories where she's not kicking a kick? Um, <laughs> oh actually Emily was very mean to me once on the pitch. Oh, it was no. Yeah. She's, Never. She's a you gotta watch out for her. Oh the quiet ones, I'm telling you. Um <laughs> I think it was like it was like what, something off of kickoff or I don't know, but it was like the first tackle of the game. Um, and I, she either tackled me or I tackled her. We were on the floor, and she went, um, "Yeah, reload, bots. Come on, get off the floor quickly." As if to say, I wasn't getting off the floor quick enough. Um, and I've also actually, she's backtracked the ref before in a game. Got sent back ten meters. Yeah, no. I saw that and I went, "You're a naughty, naughty girl." <laughs> <laughs> That's very naughty of you, Scaz. But also, isn't it just classic backline kind of chat telling yeah, you to not, get up quicker? Yeah, but you don't quicker. usually get that from Scaz. That was that was genuinely uh, out of character. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you she like, must have really disagreed with the call. Must have really. But mm. yeah, because she got walked back ten meters. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so, um, I did read. I don't think this was on your Wikipedia. Where was the ballet fact from? Where's the ballet fact come from? <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> yeah, well, I used to do it when I was younger, yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Like, like for real. I've actually got a photo on my phone right now because my mum's recently gone through photos. Would you like to see it? Yes, please. Yeah. Can, you, can you show us? I was an angel. Y- you were an angel? An in ba- angel. In, in ballet. In ballet. Hannah Bartman, the angel. I, and I had to... Well, I t- distinctly remember doing it for the... Um, my nan used to pick me up and used to have like okay we'll get it from you for the social of, uh, I will stalk you for it you don't have to get hang it on, now I will, I will literally get it now she's going to find mum now uh, oh okay oh, we are no. looking through your well, entire well. photo history right no, here no we're not oh my oh, god there's the whoa <laughs> <laughs> um oh no hang on 
It is here somewhere, I promise you. Okay. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There um, you go. Oh, my goodness, that is really you. Yeah, it's me. And a little pink wraparound jersey. And, yeah. Oh, and the little skirt that's really this cute. This one's cuter. Oh, look at you. Isn't that nice? Would the camera see it if I put it up? We're definitely going to work it in on the socials. It's cute, isn't it? That's brilliant. Yeah. That's even better I, than Emily's brownie, sporty brownie photo. Oh, yeah. sporty brownie photo. Yeah, it's cute, isn't Love it? it? I still do that face now as well. <laughs> So, okay. any, any risk of you returning and making some sort of ballet uh, cameo somewhere? Fine. I mean, fancy dress at a game. You're going to the game this weekend, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I am going to the game this weekend. You, you have been teasing up the fancy dress. <laughs> I'm not fancy dressing. This, I've already packed my bag. I'm not fancy dressing this weekend. I uh, know. Sorry, sorry. Next game. Uh, oh, 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 I, don't think I'm I, don't think, I don't think I'm going to Italy. If, if this genuinely gets enough traction, I will go and fancy dress to the world's game. Okay, there we go. Yay! Okay, we need the TikTok massive to get stuck in on this so that we can get I'm Hannah Bossman. I severely regret this. I in know. ballet kits. Ballet, you want it in ballet? Ballet. ballet. <laughs> the little blue skirts, everything, the whole thing. I don't think they're going to do my size. And the face, and, and the, the everything, and yeah. the makeup. <laughs> And the makeup, yeah. Get some makeup on. And put but my you've hair got a on. dancing background as well. Is this one of those things that you guys all seem to have in common, or what? I don't know. Maybe it's just a, a girl thing. I used to do ballet, tap dancing, jazz, disco. All of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go on, give us a little. Oh no, I can't. Could I you do tap dance? <laughs> if we had, dance. if we had tap shoes here, would you be able to? I mean, if I pulled them out from under the stage now. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> I could do maybe a little thing, but. Yeah. I could shuffle. Thing. Yeah, I could do a shuffle. Oh, I, I could try to do a wig. I used to be able to, not anymore, but... Is this one of those things that you've seen happen in celebration after a big win, or...? I've never seen Zoe do whatever so she's spoken about. She's just now. holding out on the team? Yeah, I didn't... I had no idea. I had no idea Zoe was a tap dancer. Hey? And it wasn't very good. Well, that, that <laughs> honestly, is not even relevant at this stage. We just want to see it happen. Yeah. I, I don't understand There's definitely how... a little space there, Zoe, for you to... <laughs> You should, you should definitely. <laughs> yeah. no, okay. I tell you what, we all have phones with cameras. You can do it for us on TikTok, and we'll like it. Okay. <laughs> um, so there's definitely something there. Do you know that um, Mornay Stein, who plays um, fly half uh, for the Bulls and uh, kind of kicked uh, loads of really important kicks for the Springboks, um, did. Um, very high level gymnastics as a kid. Yeah. And I wonder sometimes about kind of all of those things and whether there's some sort of um, skill transfer or something about your muscles and your tendons and your ligaments and things just doing different things. I definitely think so. Like, I think I did loads of sports when I was younger. You? I, I kind of just did rugby. <laughs> um, yeah, just rugby. Ballet and rugby. Well, ba ballet was when I was young, young. Yeah. Um, and then when I got old enough to understand that I, no one was going to force me to do the ballet if I mm. just sat at the back. Like, no one was going to, no one was going to, no was going to say anything to me. Yeah. So, um, like, I continued to do that for weeks with my nan bringing me snacks after. So I just, I correlated, go to ballet, you get food. So that was the correlation. We call that um, the Pavlova effect. People that do it with dogs. Yes. 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 Oh, I just got called a dog. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, wow. Yeah. This is now officially the good spots <laughs> in the rugby. Like, we've literally just taken it there. Um, yeah, I think there's definitely transferable skills. Like, Heather Cow's a... Um, gymnast. She was a gymnast for GB. Um, a lot of the girls, like, a lot of our kickers used to play football. Like, Zoe Harrison used to kick a ball about. Um, I think it's just, like, hand-eye coordination. Yeah, like, you've got to be able to catch. It's like getting your body in tune. Doing sports. Yeah. Do you sometimes still go out for a big little, you know, like a night out, just get out there and dance, you know, just to release a lot of it? Or do you dance alone in your house? Oh, like, Zoe, how much Zoe, of that Zoe, still Zoe. happens? I am really not a very good... Zoe, um, once she's had a drink. Yeah. So there's obviously three Zoes. There's on the pitch Zoe, there's oh. off the pitch Zoe, and there's once she's had a drink Zoe. Okay. And my limbs just go. Uh, yeah, she is oh. different gravy. <laughs> I'm a different gravy. Different gravy. Different gravy. Yeah, we, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say, I wasn't at the Greek night that she hosted herself, <laughs> but I'm gonna tell the story. Okay. It's funny. Um, so it was at the end of um Autumn's autumn campaign. autumn's campaign. Harry, Harry Potter themed yeah, session, Harry which Potter was theme. very good. We had 
candles coming yeah, from the ceiling. From the ceiling. It was we had, amazing. We had Louis Deacon in a in a um, who was he? Um, he was Malfoy's, Malfoy's dad. dad. Yes. He had a, he had a wig on a wig and a on. cane and all sorts. Mids was Voldemort. <laughs> yeah, I swear. Without well, actually, I don't, we tried to get one of those masks yes, you put over your head, yes, yes. but it was too expensive, so we couldn't okay. get it. So but, no, um, no, it was... he was Voldemort. Okay. Um, yeah, we had different houses, like the like Hufflepuff was all the Hufflepuffy people, and <laughs> Slytherin was all the <laughs> Slytherin. Sli- we made was Slytherin, <laughs> and yeah, so we had this. We'd obviously done very well in the autumns, and it was going to be a very loose night. And I think a lot of people had gone. A lot of people had gone to bed, um, but I think Zoe must have just got. Got bored. You're more than welcome to jump in because I, I didn't actually witness this. I'm telling this off third account. Um, <laughs> yeah, go on, no, go on, no, you tell it. You tell it. You tell okay. it. You tell it. I'll say it a bit to him, and then it happened. But um, yeah, so basically, it was Harry Potter night. <laughs> <laughs> and by the end of the night, it got to like a bit chilled. Everyone was just like sat around, like just chatting. <laughs> Thought, why not lime it up a little bit? Anyway, so I'd like putting my feet on the table and going, oh, my God, I'm loving you. So the table was like rising. Um, anyway. I don't know what came into my head, but I was like, should we have a Greek night? And basically, I got everyone on the feet, like, do you know the song? Like, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Then there was a pile of plates on the side, and I just started smashing the plates. I'm you, she did. Yeah, I, I cannot... I, I, honestly, it's something that everyone has to witness once in their life. But she, like, imagine that you're in some random hotel somewhere... And you just go, oh, yeah, I'll have a Greek night and just start smashing plates. OK. That's, that's Zoe Allcroft. That's the Zoe Allcroft. Yeah. yeah. I'm really sorry to the hotel. Yeah. World Rugby I mean, Player of the Year R- smashes. R- R- refunded it all. Yeah. They, 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 they sorted out the expenses. Smashes through some plates. And so set the bar pretty high after the autumns. Can't wait to see what happens after the TikTok Women's Six Nations campaign. No yeah. pressure, Zoe. That's so we're in France, that, so red yeah. wine. Something's going to break. Red wine and cheese. Yeah. Something's going to break. Something. It's just a question <laughs> of what. But we will, <laughs> we will definitely be here to get you all of the stories <laughs> afterwards. Uh, thank you so much to our incredible panel on The Good, The Scars, and The Rugby Minus The Scars tonight. Hannah Bottomen for just dishing so much of the dirt. Yeah, oh sorry my about goodness. That. We'll definitely have to get you back. <laughs> and World Rugby Player of the Year. Zoe Allcroft. We have been the good, the scars, and the rugby. We will be back with more shows. We'll keep them coming. All of the good stories, all of the dirt. <laughs> yes, sir. In partnership with our friends at Allianz. Thank you so much to Green King and Guinness for joining us tonight. Goodbye. <laughs>